romantic scene of the San Francisco World's Fair presents a panorama of fantastic splendor. In this pageant of the Pacific, Oriental arts share the spotlight with Western science. And science is the keynote of the General Motors exhibit in the Vacation Land building, where visitors are invited to satisfy their curiosity about the works of the modern motor car. The powerful Buick Dynaflash engine on display proves that Buick's beauty is more than skin deep. And Pontiac's celebrated knee action comes in for its share of attention. The famous AC trademark, Cleany the Plug, reminds visitors of this important General Motors division. And General Motors research, responsible for the development of the corporation's many products, reveals some of the latest scientific advances, such as Lucite, the remarkable translucent plastic. Demonstrators from the research laboratories stage a show which includes some of the most interesting stunts featured in the already famous Parade of Progress. On a high-frequency stove, which is perfectly cool to the touch, an egg is cooked by the eddy current set up in an iron frying pan. The newspaper proves that the stove itself is not hot, although the egg sizzles away in the usual fashion. As further evidence, the demonstrator extracts a container of ice cream from the heart of this ultra-modern stove. As a climax to the show, visitors to General Motors' exhibit at the San Francisco Fair are shown how science and research through developments which have created industries have contributed to the economic welfare of the nation. These 20th century industries afford employment for 13,800,000 Americans, many of whom are members of the General Motors family. When the New York World's Fair opened its gates to the world, it was apparent from the beginning that General Motors' Highways and Horizons exhibit would prove the smash hit of the greatest exposition of all time. First to attract the eye of the visitor is the huge streamlined locomotive powered by General Motors' diesel engines. And inside the immense building is a magnificent display of all the General Motors cars. A tilting turntable reveals the mechanism of the 1939 Oldsmobile. A novel display shows the operation of the steering mechanism and knee action suspension. And the powerful motors, usually hidden under streamlined hoods, are out in the open for critical inspection. Unveiled for the first time is the 24-cylinder, 2,400-horsepower Allison Aviation Engine, swinging a 17-foot propeller. In a striking series of photo murals, the many uses of the diesel engine are exhibited. One of the most efficient sources of power ever developed, the diesel is used on sea and land since General Motors research perfected the lightweight two-cycle diesel, which has already found an important place in America's transportation. Frigidaire, a name familiar to every visitor, is represented by a most interesting exhibit, which developed from this division's research in food preservation. A gigantic microscope gives a clue to the nature of this demonstration, which holds the attention of every inquisitive fairgoer. Through a complicated system of mirrors and lenses, the tiny animals living in a single drop of stagnant water are projected in heroic size on a large screen. An automobile whose body is made of a transparent plastic is a surefire attraction for the mechanically minded. Technically trained visitors are sure to gather around a most unusual exhibit which shows exactly what happens inside the combustion chambers of a running motor. Through the transparent quartz cylinder head, the observer sees just what makes the automobile go as the mixture of gasoline and air is ignited by the spark plug. A dramatic contrast in values and an amusing comparison in appearance is provided by two Chevrolets standing side by side. This 1913 car was the outstanding buy of its day at $1,125, as compared with the 1939 model selling for approximately 30% less. Now let's take a look at tomorrow. Outside the building again, we join the throngs waiting to see the world of the future. On the spiral ramps, we await our turn for the excursion into time and space. In a dimly lighted chamber, we begin to sense an atmosphere of mystery, as if we were about to embark upon an argosy of adventure. In the dim light, attendants lead us to comfortable chairs. Suddenly, we realize that we are moving, 
and a quiet voice coming from the chair tells of the wonders we are to witness. Seated in our traveling chairs, we see an amazing panorama spread out below us as if we were flying high above the countryside in a silent skyliner. This is the world of 1960. Sunshine, trees, farms, hills and valleys, flowers and flowing streams, this world of tomorrow is a world of beauty. Below us lies a superb one-direction highway, bearing streams of traffic at varying speeds in separate lanes. Man has forged ahead since 1939. Agriculture has truly become a science, and food is everywhere abundant. Under individual glass housings, fruit trees bear rich crops untouched by frost or summer heat. There is a small community with lovely homes and industries housed in landscape settings. Here is an aeration plant purifying the lake water and distributing it for hundreds of miles throughout the countryside. Two double directional motorways of 1960. Here is highway engineering at the most spectacular. Traffic may move safely and easily without loss of speed. On ramped loops, cars may make right and left turns at 50 miles per hour with complete safety, while express traffic continues straight through in high speed lanes at 50, 75, 100 miles an hour. Mountains and valleys, lakes and deserts form no barriers for the motorways of 1960. High above the roads of 1939, these highways of the future bear their swift burdens from city to city, from state to state. Express roads tunnel through soaring mountain ranges and straddle the precipitous cliffs, while slower traffic keeps to the local feeder roads in the valleys below. Before us lies a great four-tier suspension bridge spanning a wide river with its multiple roadways for high-speed arterial traffic. Congestion has been eliminated in this example of tomorrow's engineering, for the various converging motorways and feeder roads cross the river in separate lanes and on different levels. Now our journey takes us to the snow-clad peaks of this world of the future. At an altitude of 15,000 feet, the motorway continues through the mountains, although it's only visible here and there as it threads its way along. On our way down again toward the valleys, we pass an observatory, an outpost of science, perched on a rocky crag. Downward we journey, until we see below us a great metropolis of 1960, an American city replanned around a highly developed modern traffic system and a new concept of city life. Since 1939, the population of this metropolis has grown much greater. Yet there are no slums, no ugly and ill-planned business sections, no congestion of traffic in overburdened streets. The city of 1960 has abundant sunshine, fresh air, fine green parkways, recreational centers, handsome stores and theaters, all the result of thoughtful planning and design. This, the city of 1960, is a place in which man may realize the fulfillment of his dreams, a place suited to the living of the fuller, richer life which will be our heritage from science and research in the world of tomorrow. Soaring over the rooftops, we feel that we could almost reach down and touch the streamlined cars passing through the intersecting streets. And then our traveling chairs, of which we were hardly conscious, deposit us on a landing platform. And to our amazement, we are standing at the street intersection which we have just seen from the air. Before our eyes lies a section of the city of tomorrow. And it is indeed difficult to realize that we are not, in reality, trespassers in the world of 1960. And that's why General Motors' Highways and Horizons is the sensational hit of the New York World's Fair.